Party leaders are reportedly preparing a contingency plan now for President Biden as the Democratic nominee over concerns that the campaign is off to a slow start. Or a non-start. A new report says despite assurances from the administration, there's speculation, quote, that Biden won't actually be running for re-election. They feel like time is already running out and that the lack of the more robust campaign activity that they want to see is a sign that his heart really isn't in it. Well, our next guest is one of the Democratic hopefuls looking to take on Joe Biden. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joins us live in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. Happy to be here. It's great to have you. <laughs> so, so what do you make of these stories? It sounds like uh, a lot of the big, deep-pocketed uh, Democratic donors are, are nervous that Joe's not going fast enough. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening with his campaign. On our campaign, we raised $6 million in the first quarter. Um, we raised $3 million, a $1 million a day the last three days of that quarter, and that flow of money is continuing. We have 140,000 volunteers already in the field. We have organizations that we're putting together in all 50 states, and we have an extraordinary engagement on social media. Sure. So. What, do you, what do you think is the main issue that you get when you meet people that you're running? I mean, what do they dive into you uh, on? You know, my issues are, are censorship in the war and, and rebuilding the middle class. The, I, the reaction that I get from the public, and if you look at my Twitter feed and social media, it's this hunger that people have to bring the country together. They're tired of the polarization. They're tired of the anger. Um, and, you know, we've been very disciplined about not criticizing individuals, but to, you know, talk about policies and to, to try to figure out, um, to, to, try, to, to try to focus on the values that Americans share with each other, Republicans and Democrats, rather than focusing on those issues that are keeping us all apart. Because right now, the, the polarization is so toxic, it's so venomous, and... It's, I think it's more dangerous than any time since the American Civil War. And, and we have to start talking to each other. Americans have to start talking with people that they don't agree with on every issue. Sure. Yeah, you know, when you look at the polls, they say inflation is what is the main concern this election for Americans. Is that what you're hearing on the campaign trail? And what's you your know, plan? I, you know, I'm hearing not only inflation, but interest rates. The interest rates have cut off the, um, it, the higher interest rates now, which is the government's way, the Fed's way of dealing with inflation, is actually worse for a lot of Americans, that small businesses in the city simply do not have access to capital. I would talk to an African-American woman in, uh, in Cleveland this week who has a company that her family has run, a sausage company, for 80 years, and the company was flourishing, but they need capital, yeah. and they survived the pandemic. They survived the lockdowns, which mo a lot of Cleveland did not. 41% of black-owned businesses is permanently bankrupt. She survived, but it's killing. It, it, she's now declaring bankruptcy because of the lack of access to capital. And these local community banks are hoarding their liquidity because their, you know, their bonds are now, yeah, uh, the, the, the price of their bonds are going down and, uh, and it's going to choke off every small business in this country and that is frightening. And we're looking at another interest rate raise too. That's what they're saying. Yeah, and I, you know, inflation is horrible for the middle class, but it may be that the interest rates are even worse. Yeah. You were talking about how polarized the country is. And you're a lifelong Democrat, and yet so many Republicans are supporting you. And I'm sure when you gave that number about how much money you've gotten in campaign contributions, a lot of it is coming from Republicans. They're interested in you advancing to a debate with Joe Biden, which doesn't look like it's going to happen. I mean, we're going to try to get the president to debate. We think it's really important. Um, I, you know, and it's important for, the, for, I think, the Democratic Party because ultimately the president is going to have to debate a Republican and the Republican likely, oh, we don't know, but is going to be Trump. Trump is probably the most successful debater in this country since Lincoln Douglas in the way that he dispatched 16 Republican opponents one after the other during, you know, in 2016 was really quite extraordinary and he has his own technique that people like. 
and uh, and it's like going to a prize fight, and and uh, you need practice. Sure. And that usually happens during the primary. And asking, you know, the president not to debate during the primary is like asking a prize fighter to, you know, to, to practice for his big bout by, by sitting on a couch and eating right. Chick Fil A. It's interesting <laughs> that you're saying that and praising him because you normally don't hear that from a candidate who's, who could potentially run against him. Are you learning? Did you learn through this campaign what your father taught you, what your uncle taught you, what Donald Trump has taught you? Well, about what? Just about how to run a campaign. Uh, well, I've got very good. Uh, I have a very good staff running this campaign. You met Dennis Kucinich, who is my uh, my campaign manager, and he's running 42 campaigns. Former Fox News contributor. He's nodding his exactly. head. Yes, he's doing a good job <laughs> right, right off camera there. But, so, uh, and he's running two to presidential campaigns. He's 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 won, I think, 35 of the 42 campaigns. That yeah, he, Dennis knows what he's doing. Do you think? <laughs> do you think Joe Biden is afraid to debate you? Or is it a historical thing? I, I, you know, I don't. I think he. I think uh, they just. I, I don't know. I think he doesn't want to. Uh, I don't know what's happening with President Biden. I think for, it's good. It's important for the country that we have debates. And we have retail politics. There are so many Americans who who feel that the system is rigged, and that you know the parties are picking like they did in the Soviet Union and telling people who they're going to vote for. And it really ought to be you know at this time in history, it's really important to persuade the American people that democracy works, that we're all participants, right. and that people can look at the different candidates and make a rational choice. So when your dad was running for president, we were in the middle of the Vietnam War, in the yeah. middle of racial unrest. There was a sense that the country was coming apart. What do you think your dad would think now about where the country is right now? What perspective, being that you lived through that, do you have on this? Well, you know, one of the things that he really was trying to bring people together, and he succeeded in doing that. The last day of his life, he won the most urban state in this country, which is California, and the most rural, South Dakota. And the people who supported him, and particularly the whites in Maryland and the you know on the East Coast who lined the train track after he died, two and a half million people. Many of those people voted not for George McGovern four years later, but for George Wallace, who was antithetical to everything my country, my father believed in. Um, but my father was able to bring people together, and the major way that he did that was by just telling the truth, and uh, and that is an extraordinary that people want to hear the truth. Right. And a lot of Republicans, as you as you note, are supporting me, and I get note after note saying we don't believe everything that you believe in, but we believe that you're telling us the truth and that you're going to bring people together. Well, and that's what we want. And you've gone viral, uh, not only with your message, but just <laughs> your sheer masculinity. I mean, you've got <laughs> those workout videos that are floating around. I mean, that that. <laughs> what did that video teach you about the state of American politics in 2023? Uh, well, I want to point out that on that particular video, that was my last set because I got a lot of complaints. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of complaints, and I'm glad for this opportunity to finally clarify. You're correcting that. the record. Okay, fine. So, did you? Did this, did this video catch you by surprise? That one caught me by surprise because there was a guy who jumped up to spot me, who I'd never seen before, and, he, and I didn't I know that he had his friend taking pictures. Of, right. Are you uh, outside are you, just your shirt? Didn't release a lot? this. Someone else released it. Somebody I thought else you released, released this. No, but I, I oh, Okay. Do you? Are, are you floating around California without a shirt a lot? Well, you know that that's that's Gold's Gym in Venice. So that's just what they which do is, there. Yeah, and it's okay. an outdoor gym, and it was hot out that day, and I was trying to get my vitamin C. How See, many push-ups can you do? <laughs> I've been there. They told me to put a shirt Good on. Good ones. I can probably do about fifty. How many can you do, Brian? I think I could do the same. You want to try? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, to should we challenge them to a well, competition? You'd have, make, you'd have to make a huge contribution. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't think I'm allowed to He's do that. Keep my job. <laughs> but uh, the you, the testosterone. Testosterone replacement therapy that you're using. What could you tell us about that? Does it make you feel you know, better? Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, I. You know, I'm 69 I, uh, years old. I started doing TRT when I was 65. My doctor's advice: because everybody our age starts to lose testosterone, and when you do that, you lose muscle mass. 
And they, you know, it just, if I feel better when I have You feel great right now. Yeah. You feel better in your Why are you okay with that and not vaccines, certain vaccines? Oh, well, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not against vaccines. I've never been anti vax. That's something that's said about me to, you know, make me look crazy like a conspiracy theorist. Um, what I've said is let's have testing for each of the vaccines to make sure that they are, um, that they're safe and effective. Vaccines are the only medical product that is not safety tested prior to licensure. And we need placebo controlled trials where, you know, you have a placebo group and a vaccine group, and then let's look at the health five years later and make sure they're healthy, and that's all I want. Mm -hmm. Every uh, candidate who's stopped by the couch, we ask them what their website is, if people would like more information, or to donate, what's your website? Kennedy24.com. Thank you for asking. Okay. That's very easy. <laughs> okay. Very Senator nice. John Kennedy's not going to sue you about that? Is that oh, no. no. Okay. The other Kennedy. You're the first. Yeah. All right. Uh, Best uh, of luck the rest of the way. Really quickly, what about the hearing? You have a hearing coming up. It's next Thursday, we, right? We have a hearing on, on censorship, and, you know, Judge Dowdy in... Louisiana just issued a 155-page decision for give, forbidding the White House or federal agencies from uh, from collaborating with the social media groups to censor Americans. Thank and you. I was yeah. all over that lawsuit. I was the first one that the administration started censoring. Not for misinformation. Nothing I put on the Internet was misinformation, but it was just politically inconvenient, and that's not what we do in America. And I hope they can enforce it. I hope that decision stands. So you're going to testify in detail about that. Yes. Awesome. Fantastic. While you're in the building, you want to go upstairs and go through your brother's desk? Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> Why don't you all hit the floor, right. do some push-ups while you I tell you what's going on. Can we do a push-up contest? I told you, if you make a big, big <laughs> He's not allowed. Uh, that, Dennis, would you give him the green light? Should we do this? <laughs> Just do a few. No. Do a few for us. <laughs> all right. Bobby, thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you. Yes, we do appreciate it. Still ahead, cruising across America, Fox Weather hits the streets with a special guest.